What's up, guys? This is Coach Grant with First Down Training, and today we're going to be breaking down Emmanuel Sanders and his route running ability. I think he is the best receiver on the 49ers and a great addition to their team this year. And guys, please leave in the comments who you would like to see me break down next. I would really appreciate that. Let's get started with this breakdown. So the first clip we're going to show, he's going to be running an out route, right? This is going to be how you run an out route when the DB has outside leverage. Because if Sanders just tries to go there right now, he's going to wall him into the sideline, and he's not going to get any separation, and he's not going to give any room for the quarterback to work. So let's watch how he attacks this thing. So this is what we talk about when we say sell vertical, right? Right? Just drops right on a dime. Pad level's going straight forward every single time, not popping up, not slowing down. So comes off the line of scrimmage immediately. Eyes go over his inside shoulder. Okay, We're trying to get him to open up his hips to the middle of the field, eyes to the inside. Selling like he might just be trying to go vertical right now. He's going to break it off on a post. He's going to break it off on a dig. So going full speed, stride for stride. This DB has to overcommit. He does not want to get beat over the top. Right? Doesn't want to get beat man to man over the top. So what he does is he drops his weight right on a dime, gets that DB to overcommit and change his direction. How are we able to do that? How is a receiver able to do that so fast? It comes from your hips and it comes from the drive from your feet. Okay, So he's bursting up, drops his hips violently, bringing his chin to his knee, dropping his hips almost like he's doing a squat or a lunge. Guys, we don't want to bend at the waist where we're off balance. We want to drop our hips. So he takes that first step, one, two, and he's pushing off the inside portion of this left leg. That's how you get some separation. That's how you explode at the top of the break and that's how you're able to stop on a dime and then accelerate Accelerate out. That first step with your hips drops you down, gets you under control. Two, and he's sprinting out of there, pushing off the inside portion of his left leg, getting that DB to overcommit, gaining separation from him, catches this ball, and then he bursts up field for a great play. That's a great job working this out route against in or outside leverage, out route against outside leverage, selling vertical. Guys, that's how you can get separation when you're running an out route against outside leverage. Sell vertical, drop right on a dime. All great receivers have to be able to change direction at the drop of a hat. Now let's watch this thing full speed one more time. So he's bursting out here, full speed, drops right on a dime. Two steps in and out of this break, accelerates out, catches this ball, and gets a field. That's a great job. Okay, so now he's going to be working a post out. Little tough angle to see this release here, but we're going to watch it full speed, then we're going to break it down. So he comes off, jab to the inside, breaks to the post, three steps, gets him in that blind spot, swats him by, then catches this ball. It's a great job working this blind spot, working a post out. So he's coming off here. Jabs to the inside. Right? I'm not going to worry too about too much to the release right now. But he's fighting those hands. He always has a plan for your hands and for your feet. So he's attacking that wrist, that forearm. That's a point of control, right? We don't want to be fighting these hands right here because that's not a point of control. So receivers, anytime we're working our hand technique, forearms, back of the elbow, back of the shoulder. Those are the three places that you want to attack. So he's bursting up field. Now he makes this break to the post, right? He's going to take it for three steps. So one with the left first step. Two, three, stick in the ground. He's going to be in this blind spot at 23 right here. He overcommitted his hips to the post. That's how you sell it with your eyes. You want to sell this post with your eyes. So he's coming here, gives his eyes over the middle, gets his DB to overcommit right here. Two, three, stick, and he's pushing over to the outside, pushing to on this out, pushing off the inside portion of his foot, swatting that DB by, making him fall, and then bursting out, catching this ball, and then getting a feel. That's a great job by Emmanuel Sanders, working this post out, using his hand technique, using his eyes to tell lies. It's a great job. Let's watch this thing full speed one more time. Coming out. Break, one, two, three, eyes to the inside, sudden stick in that blind spot, swat him by, make him fall, then burst up field. So now he's going to be running a stop route right here. Now the main thing I want you to see about this route is how he's in and out of this break as fast as he can because this DB is going to be making a good break on the ball. And this is the difference between the ba- the ball getting broken up or the pass getting broken up and us making a catch. So let's watch this thing full speed, then we'll break it down. So he bursts up again, full speed. Drops right on a dime, in and out, four steps, and that DB makes a good break on the ball. But if he's not in and out of this break fast right here, DB's going to make a play on it because he's making a good break on the ball. But because Garoppolo throws this thing with good timing, he's in and out of this break fast. That's why we're able to get a completion here. That's the importance of getting in and out of the break least amount of steps possible. So selling vertical, right? Going full speed ahead. Good pad level, not showing up his numbers when he's about to make a break. What a lot of you guys will do is you'll start to pick up from your waist up. You'll start to have a vertical posture and you'll be real tall. You're exposing your numbers. All that does is let a DB know a break is coming, right? So he's going full speed every single time, pumping his arms. Gets Peterson to start running, right? Going full speed, gets this DB to go full speed. That's what we need to do. And then drops his way here, snaps down again. What did I talk about earlier in the clip? Violent hips, bringing that chin to his knee. You want to sink your hips and you want to be explosive with your hips. That's how you're able to stop right on a dime. You're able to put the brakes on right on a dime. So he goes one, two, and that second step is going to push him back and angle him back downhill again. Chin to his knee. We're in an explosive pad level position so this whole process can happen fast. DB's not going to be able to react as fast as we are because we know where we're 
we're going. The DB doesn't know where we're going. So he comes out. Then that third step again, you could see it angles him back downfield. Now he snaps that head back around. Ball's probably in the air right now. Garoppolo throws this thing with good timing. Three, four, and he's all the way completely turned around now, getting out of this break. Four steps possible. DB still hasn't even made a break on the ball. That's why we're able to get a completion. Ball's in the air, catches this ball, and again, catching traffic, what are we supposed to do? We're going to catch this thing, look at this thing in, strong grip, and then we're taking this thing right to the tuck. Catch, right to the tuck. That's how you catch a ball in traffic, guys. Catch, tuck, don't let the DB make a play on it. That's a great job using least amount of steps possible at the top of the route to catch this ball. That's the reason why he was able to get a completion on this because he came out of this thing least amount of steps possible. Let's watch this thing full speed one more time. Sell vertical, least amount of steps, least amount of steps possible at the top of the break. Accelerate out of the break. In this case, he didn't have to, but that's how we get separation at the top of our route, guys, against zone coverage. Let's watch this thing full speed one more time. So he's coming out, selling vertical. Drops his hips, two, three, four, in and out of this break, catch, put it away. That's a great job. Violent to the tuck when we catch this ball in traffic. Okay, so now he's going to be working a slant here. Now, Peterson's a good corner, obviously. We all know that. So when we're working a slant, we just need him to lean to the inside just a little bit, guys. We don't need to break his ankles completely because if we spend too much time on this release right here, it's going to screw up the timing of the play. Garoppolo wants this ball out of his hands fast. So let's watch this thing full speed, then we'll break it down. So he's coming out, one, two accelerates out of the break. That's what I'm talking about, accelerating out of the break, getting separation. So he takes this little hesitation hop right here with this left foot. Hesitation hop, one, two. Okay, now when he takes this second step here, his head and shoulder movement is to the outside. As you can see, this gets Peterson to open up just a little bit. Not drastic, right? But he's not have, he doesn't have hands on him, right? So that's all we need to be in. We need to stay in this position, stay out of that range of the DB, one, two, and then Burst up out of this route, right? So he's coming out, one, two. And I want you to see when he goes one, two, he's pushing off the inside portion of his feet. That's what makes you explosive, guys. Push, pushing off the inside part of his foot, head and shoulder movement, avoiding that contact. And here, he's accelerating out. When we push off the inside part of our foot, that's like when you're running a 40, guys, and you want to explode off of a break. That's exactly what he's doing. Bursting up field, snaps that head back around, and then catches this ball. Reason why he's able to get so much separation at this point is because he's accelerating at the top of the route and pumping those arms. That's a great Great job by Emmanuel Sanders off the line of scrimmage. Let's watch this thing full speed one more time. Coming out, one, two, accelerates out of the break, catches this ball. That's a great job by Emmanuel Sanders working a slant off the line of scrimmage. So now we're going to talk about him working his hands at the within the route, not just off of the release. Your hands are not just going to be used when you make a release. You're going to have to work your hand technique throughout the route. Throughout, Pretend the DB has crap underneath his fingernails and you don't want him to touch you. So we're going to watch this thing full speed, then we're going to break it down. So he's coming off, jab to the inside. Peterson plays it good, but he swats those hands off at the top of the route to make sure he gets some separation when he makes this break. So... Makes his jab to the inside, and he bursts up, running to the inside here. Peterson's playing this thing great. He's got two hands on him. He's jamming him off the line. He's doing his job. He's trying to disrupt the route, disrupt the timing of the route. That's the whole goal of this DB when he's getting hands, when he's jamming you. It's to disrupt the timing of the play, and he's doing his job right now. But Sanders does a good job of fighting through it, and as you can see, he gets this right arm underneath the DB's arms. Okay, Now he's going to rip up underneath it. Rip up and give a little push, right? So we got to be physical. Now, this might be a little bit of a push off here, but within this route, we just got to be physical. He's being physical. He's grabbing us on the inside. That might be a hold right there. This might be a push off, whatever it might be, but we got to be physical within the route. We don't want him to touch you. Every time this DB has hands on you like this, we got to get those hands off. So we could either rip underneath with this arm. We could give a little push at the top. We could chop down, but anything to get this DB's hands off you because when we can get in this position, that's a bad position for this DB because at the top of the route, when you get a guy fast like Emmanuel Sanders and he's making this break, he's accelerating out of this break, as you can see, pumping those arms, snaps that head around, Garoppolo throws this thing with good timing. Peterson doesn't even know where the ball's at. That's a great job and it all started because we got his hands off of us. If he gets his hands on us throughout the entire route, he's doing his job. So when we're even on the release, on the release, we got to get his hands off and then at the top of the route, we got to make sure he doesn't have hands on us because that's how we're going to get separation at the top of our route so when he comes off he gives a little bit of a one two crossover release doesn't really get peterson that well he does a good job of keeping a good base so we got to work our hand technique throughout the route let's watch this thing full speed and then we'll let's watch this thing full speed one more time so working up to the route gets those hands off a little bit of a push snaps that head back around catches this ball that's a great job okay so now we're going to watch sanders training here okay now i want to watch i want to talk about how everything he does when he's practicing because i think a lot of you receivers can get value from this is that something that ties into the, what he does in the game okay so on this, he's going to be running a whip route. So we're going to watch it full speed. Then we're going to break it down. So he's coming off one, two, three steps to the slant, drops his weight, and he's coming out on this whip route. Okay, so main thing I want to talk about here. When he works this double move, his feet are a little bit outside of his frame. Okay, but the main thing 
is look at the shin angle on both of these. The weight is on the inside portion of his foot, okay? That's where we need to be. We need to be on the inside portion of our foot anytime we're working a release because that's how we explode out of a release. If we're pushing off the inside arch of our foot, we're going to be explosive. Imagine if he was on the outside of his foot, right? He'd be standing straight up and then his hips would be up and he wouldn't be in an explosive position. He'd explode his pad, he's explode his pads, expose his pad level. Right here, he's got his chest down. He's not exposing his numbers, pushing off the inside portion of his feet. That's how he's explosive, right? Now he comes up into this route. He makes this release, then he goes up into his three step. So that's one, two, three to the slant, right? Making everything look the same. Again, pushing off the inside portion of his feet, but head and shoulder movement on the stick. You watch any NFL route runner, anybody that's good at their craft, they make all their routes look the same. Anytime they make a post break, anytime they make an outbreak, dig, they make it all look the same. Head and shoulder movement to the outside. Now he's going to take this slant up for about three steps. And now bringing his chin to his knee. That's how you drop and change direction on a dime. You have violent hips. You shoot your hips into the ground. So he's coming up here, one, two, three, drops those hips. And now the way to get out of a whip route, guys, is to have good shin angles. You want to be, again, pushing up the inside portion of your foot, but your shin angles are at a 45-degree angle. You're dropping your chin to your knee so you could explode out towards the whip route. I get outside. That's how you get in and out of a whip route effectively. As you can see here, he's pushing out with that left leg. He's pushing off this break. He's pumping those arms. He's accelerating out. Then he makes this catch for a good job. That's how you train to benefit you in the game, guys. You don't want to be just running routes and going through the motion. You want to make everything as game realistic as possible. Nobody guarding him, right? But he still makes this release explosive. When he makes this slant break, he still gives head and shoulder movement, and he still drops and explodes out of the break as fast as he possibly can. That's how you train for a game realistic situation. Let's watch this thing full speed. So he's coming out. One, two. One, two, three. Drops the hips. Sinks his hips. Chin to his knee. Explodes out of this break. So now he's going to be running a fade. He's going to be working a little bit of a hesitation hop, jab to the inside, but the main thing I want you to see is how he doesn't look right away. This is why you train to be like a game. If you're if you're working out and you're doing all these pointless drills that aren't going to help you in a game, you're really not going to get any better. You're just doing pointless drills. You're going to get better at the drill, but it's not going to help you at all. Everything these guys do, everything the guys at the top of their game do, it's to help them on Sundays whenever they play. Okay, Sunday, Saturday, some of the best guys in college, whenever they play, it's to help them out in that situation. So he's working this route here. He works this hesitation release one, two. Okay, so there's going to be a hesitation. When you want to work this kind of release, it's when the DB's not jamming you, right? But he's about one to two yards off, maybe in this catch technique, kind of in that no man's land that I'd like to call it. So he comes off hesitation, right? That hesitation is to get a read on this DB. How's he going to play me? Is he going to stand, stand good, strong base and try to get hands? Or is he going to bail out of there, right? How's he going to play it? And then he gives a one, two here. Now this one, two, I want you to see pushing off the inside portion of his foot. His toes are straight forward. Anytime we're working a release, guys, we want to have our toes straight forward, and we want our shin to be angled just like this, pushing off the inside portion of our foot. I can't stress it enough. Now, his hands are a little wide. That's one thing I can critique because that exposes his chest, and if the DB were to come up and put hands on him, he could easily get it on the inside of his frame. So I would like to keep those hands closed, but he does a good job of giving violent head and shoulders to the inside. Anytime we're working head and shoulder movement, it's got to be violent. So he comes up here. One, two, violent head and shoulders. He's pushing out. Now he's working his hand technique again, working those hands at throughout the route, not just on the release throughout the route. You want to pretend like he's got crap underneath his fingernails. This is everything you should be doing. Routes versus air, one-on-ones. You should be working these situations. Now, as you can see right here, he's just going routes versus air, but he's not looking back for this ball right now. He's focused on getting separation, getting beating this DB, working a game-like situation, and then catching this ball over the top. That's a great job by Emmanuel Sanders working this fade to make it as game realistic as possible. Let's watch this full speed one more time so hesitation one two working that crossover don't look until you got him beat by about three steps making his game realistic as possible for a great job all right guys i really want to thank you for watching again please leave in the comments who you would like to see me break down next i would really appreciate that and i'll see you guys next time